You're listening to the Yes, I'm Still Sober podcast with John Rabin. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Yes, I'm Still Sober podcast. I'm John Rabin. It's episode 70, you guys. It's October 23rd, the day after my birthday. Yesterday I turned 46. And uh, so, you know, this is my birthday song. It isn't very long. The end. Uh, yeah. I basically crossed into the threshold, threshold of uh, uh, my late 40s, which is a little... Ugh sounding but uh i had lunch with my dad today and he just kind of you know he asked me how does late 40s feel i'm like i don't know man it feels just like 45 did i'm fine it doesn't it hasn't it doesn't seem to bother me yet i mean i know that uh my body's gonna continue to wear and tear as time goes on but like today i'm fine and he, he goes yeah 40s my 40s didn't bother me at all i was actually in the best shape of my life in my 40s which was encouraging but a little also kind of a kind of like what he didn't say was a little foreshadowing yes a little foreboding foreboding and in, indeed just the uh yo man in my 40s i was in great shape dot 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 says nothing about his 50s, 60s, and beginning of his 70s. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it's it's something. I had a very low-key birthday, and it was exactly what I wanted. It's a really great week uh, for me, like, giving myself excuses to watch my favorite movies. Because I had this thing uh, where... I don't know if I don't know what it's related to. I don't know if it's related to a level of anxiety with being sober and like control issues. It absolutely has to do with control issues, uh, having to, to control my uh, my emotions. Like I like to keep my emotional range in the uh, you know comfortably numb area, kind of a thing. So I there's a lot of when it comes to like watching new movies that I haven't seen or TV shows that I haven't seen that, you know, some people like suspense. I do not. I don't like awkward comedy. I don't like sitting there going, what's going to happen? Like, I hate that shit. I really, it irritates me. It's completely different with with reading a book, though. I, and I think it's because with reading a book, I can control in my what I'm imagining in my head, and you know, take it at a certain speed. But like with movies and TV, they just it presents to you. So uh, it's so I tend to get kind of like eh. So uh, yeah, for for me to watch something new that's a that's a, a story that's an, you know that's fiction or whatever and or to watch movies i have to really be excited it has to be like a tarantino or scorsese it has to like be something um like guy ritchie has got a new movie coming out uh beginning of next year which is he's you know after what 12 years he's finally returning to doing a crime film and it's going to be like it like his movie snatch it's it's uh, called the the gentleman um like i'm excited about that stuff like that i'll watch you know that it, but like if there's you know hey do you want to watch this suspenseful drama no <laughs> no it's it's gonna make me uncomfortable for maybe five minutes at a time. Like, I just don't, I, I don't know. It's, it's, I do it still, but it's not, uh, and then, you know, of course, after I watch something that's good, even though I was hesitant to do so, I'm like, uh, okay, you know what? That was fine. That was good. I'm glad I saw that, even though I, I didn't want to. Very stubborn. But when it comes to movies I've already seen, I will watch several movies over and over again no problem and I was given the excuse to do that because uh, for my birthday 
my girlfriend had never seen Army of Darkness. So we fucking watched Army of Darkness. It made sense. Halloween month, whatever. I'm like, you're going to enjoy it. It's it's ridiculous. And she did, and it was. Um, I have to do a podcast tonight, uh, and I'll tell you more about it once it releases. Um, but it's a it's a movie podcast, and I had to choose a movie, and I chose uh, Big Trouble in Little China, another one of my favorites. Which that's a, I what I like about that movie is that is uh, you either really enjoy that movie or you're really confused as to why people enjoy that movie because <laughs> it's it's bizarre. So I get to talk about that at length tonight, and then when it posts i'll promote it on this um and then last week was the 20th anniversary of fight club another one that i watch over and over again and i dedicated a whole podcast episode to i think it's i think i called it fight club changed my life twice um and it's it's interesting to me that 20 years later it's still people really like it or really don't like it uh there's still different interpretations of it uh when i've i've seen people talk about it like like those youtube videos of like analysis and stuff and they just they didn't get the same thing that i got from the movie and it's it's interesting to see people still kind of going you know uh just so this is an anti-woman movie all right yeah, but uh, on the surface, but it's there's some more depth to it. Did you did you finish it? You're just focusing on three sentences, you know, one one section of the movie. I don't know, but uh, yeah. So it was a but but it was very low key. Like you know, I got food. Like we ate, but we didn't eat out. Like we we ate at home. We watched the movie at home. That was you know that. You know, what do you want to do for your birthday? I want to stay home. That's what I want to do. That's who I am now. I enjoy I enjoy doing things out. But man, do I enjoy being at home because that's where my things are. All right, I got to do a uh, some self promotion here. The I'm doing a show this Saturday uh, at Raw Paw, which is an art, I'm reading this, I, which is an art collective, print house, and representation for Austin Art. Um, and they, it's at 506 East St. Elmo, uh, Suite A3. That's great. Uh, but the event is called uh, The Dark Arts, a variety show of dark and occult work. Now, hang on. <laughs> Let me read it. Uh, Let's see. The description says our our world is a combination of darkness and light. We all have a shadow, a collection of negative traits, which is often hidden from the outside world. A failure to acknowledge and make peace with the shadow can lead to being unconsciously controlled and dominated by these negative traits. Dark arts is an acknowledgement of our of the darkness present within our inner and outer space and the importance of understanding it. Huh. But it's a... Uh, $5 suggested donation and then drinks provided by St. Elmo Brewing Company and Tito's Vodka. Huh? Guys like booze. But uh, it's, it's a Saturday, 7 p.m. till midnight. But there's, uh, so there's going to be one, two, three, several visual artists doing, uh, let's say, film photography, video installation, geometri- geometric pattern, mixed me- media illustration, digital illustration, installation, uh, different so there's going to be lots of art and then there's uh, different performing artists now so like from 7.30 to 8 Death Adder is performing which is a dark ambient drone DJ and then uh, and then around 8.20 I'm going to be doing stand up that's right and then following me is Rickshaw Billy's Burger Patrol which is stoner rock and then at 10 o'clock Communion, which is a funeral doom metal band, will be headlining. So, yeah, dude, that's also also there's uh you know somebody's gonna uh, a guy named Lorf will be performing stick and poke tattoos. 
Um, there's going to be merchandise being sold, art all over the place. So I, if you hear that description, there's no. I'm not trying to sell this to you because I think that if you hear that description, you're either going to go ah, or you're going to go fuck yeah. I'm going to check that shit out because that's that is a very niche uh, that appeals to this like there's a section of society that's going to be like that sounds pretty badass I think I'll, I'll check it out um, but John why are you performing uh, because I am considered I, my comedy is kind of considered dark to some people uh, not to a lot of people though but uh, to normies maybe I don't know Maybe, you know, because I talk about I talk about the heroin use. I have heroin jokes. I have, uh, you know, I'm not the most um, optimistic. I'm not, you know, I'm not a negative person, but I'm, I'm more of a realist and kind of dry about it. But I don't mind. It's, it's funny because I'm not offensive, but, you know, but I can make people uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> because because it's like uh, this, so we're talking about this then yeah we are going to talk about this so I think it's going to be an interesting show it's going to be fun um, because I actually like stoner I like stoner rock and uh, doom metal and ambient drone that just so happens that I like those kind of shit that I'm going to be on that show with them that you know and I'm getting paid so fuck it so I yeah so I'm all about that so that's my little promotion I'm going to be doing that on Saturday, uh, 26, you know, check it out, dude, you know, live, you know, celebrate your urge to be Halloween ish, like early. So that, that's what's going on then. Um, what did I want to talk about? Oh yeah. Let me, I've got just like, just one thing to talk about today, really. So I was going to talk about, I have this urge to talk about death but I'm not going to do that today I want to talk about that next week for the Halloween episode (laughs) that just seemed more appropriate Uh, I mean I say that we'll see what I feel like in a week let's see if I commit to that shit but uh, you know so I've turned 46 right and it's amazing the change with being seven years sober seven years one month and change sure why not um you know just the the mindset and as as time goes on uh and how and i think that things have gotten better because i have continued to work on myself not diligently and not like some kind of weird uh you know, driven. I am not a driven person. That is true. Uh, but because, I mean, things still come up, you know, and I, I haven't talked about it in a while um, because a lot of my desire to, for the, for the old lifestyle where I was going out, going out to bars and getting drunk, um, and then the other lifestyle of staying at home and doing heroin. Uh, that one I don't. Yeah. Now, now the the heroin lifestyle I don't, obviously don't miss, and uh, you know the escapism of that. But the 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 bar life I kind of miss um, in brief, which is is perfectly natural. What happens? You know, you, you little brief moments you'll go, oh, uh, you could. Uh, but it's it's really easy for me to immediately go, yeah, well, you know, that's not who I am anymore. You know, and I did that. You did that enough. That was I'm <clears throat> fortunate enough to have uh, survived like that. I did it enough to where I I drank myself out of it. And I, I feel fortunate to, to where it was easy for me psychologically to just look at it as, as well, I'm not that person anymore. And there's no way that's going to be as fun as you think it is, 
you know, in this brief moment, you know, use that, use the whole cliche, play the tape out. Um, you know, finish the YouTube, finish watching the rest of the YouTube video. If you want to modernize that bullshit, but uh, yeah, things have uh, things have changed, and uh, and I like where I'm at because I, my life on day to day, you know, I this is this right here is my meeting, and what I wanted to bring up was that um, I enjoy my email address, by the way. Uh, still sober pod at gmail.com is the email specifically for the podcast. Uh, and I enjoy it when I get contacted by people who have discovered the podcast and who just wanted to say hi and who they were. And I, you know, I really appreciate the emails that I've received from you guys to let me know who you are. Um, and that, and that this actually means something to you no matter at what level, you know, because I didn't know what was this was going to turn into. I didn't know, you know, this was just going to, you know, be for, because I have people who listen to this who, who still drink. They just find me entertaining and they like the insight. And, you know, some, you know, some people will listen to it who know me just to uh, catch up, you know. It's like, it's like having a conversation with you without talking to you, which is uh, flattering. Uh, but uh, but also the whole reason that I, I wanted to talk about stuff every week is just from my angle because I didn't feel like there was enough voices that were in that that were sober that were in their own recovery that wasn't uh, related to twelve step not to be anti twelve step just d- they did their own path just to encourage other people in their own path who, you know, that there's a different way that because I, it's the thing ultimately that I'm happy that I'm not doing a 12 step program. The thing that really, what I really enjoy that I'm not having to deal with is because to me, if you think about not drinking on a daily basis, it feels as harmful to me as if you're thinking about drinking because you're still obsessing about something you're not doing that you miss and your brain is very powerful. You know, it's why... Uh, it's why placebos work, the placebo effect. It's why, uh, you know, people who have, you know, who can can overcome cancer with the, you know, willpower in the mind in addition, you know, versus, you know, just treatment. But, you know, once people give up, they, you know, they they're gone. It's, you know, the power of, of the mind is is so I mean, it's such it's so there. That we're, we're like, yeah, you know, I mean, it's that to me, focusing on if you can get it's, it's about getting to the point where you're not thinking about it. You're not basing. I mean, you're going to think about it. it's going to come up, obviously, but you don't live your life to not drinking. I'm not going to drink today. Like that's your, you know, your goal for the day makes sense. When you're starting off, it makes sense when you're trying to get those 30 days, it makes sense when you're trying to get your 90 days, it makes sense when you're trying to get that first year. But at some point when you're working on yourself and you're working on other stuff, you've got to move past that being the goal. You got to get to the point where you're not thinking of the next day is today I'm not going to drink it's going to be today I'm going to have a ginger ale and I'm going to walk my dog. That's what I'm going to do today. I got to do laundry. That's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to see people that I care about. I'm going to go watch that fucking dumb movie that everybody's talking about. So, cause I'm getting a little bit of FOMO. I got to see the movie or whatever, whatever, you know, dumb thing that you got to do. My big thing, my dumb thing, of course, is fantasy football. I got to get a win this week. 
We gotta win. The collective we. This made up team that makes no sense. And there's really, you know, it's it's meaningless. But it means something to me today. You know, I, I, there's just, it's it's a mindset that, that it's, uh, and it's like, well, how do you get there? Man, I don't know. You just, you work on it. You try not to obsess about it. It's, it's. You, tr- you avoid being a dry drunk, I guess. And I know a lot of people don't like the, tr- like the term dry drunk because it's very AA based. And it's, you know, it, it comes from AA and it comes from a very judgmental sect of AA, <laughs> of, those, of people who just, you know, oh, they're not in AA. They must be a dry drunk, that kind of mentality. But the thing is, is that it's like, and I've heard people who are anti-AA go, Go, well, dry drunk's not a real thing. No, that's just made up. Everything's made up. Every term is made up and based, but it's based on something. And I think that dry drunk is based on something because I see people and I think that's what it is. I think it's uh, because there are, you know, my my grandfather was one who uh, finally stopped you know, stop drinking uh, with the help of uh, one of those meds that you take that makes you sick if you drink. But he didn't do anything else. And uh, and he spent the rest of his life kind of miserable. I mean, not, you know, when family was around, but, you know, he but he wasn't, but he didn't do anything. Because you were kind of, because you basically still are holding on to resentment, uh, you know, holding on to the, you know, being miserable, like, because you can't do your favorite thing. And, and that's what you have to get past. You have to get past the idea that this is what defines you. And I think that's the whole idea of the dry drunk or whatever, which is, which is the, uh, uh, the idea, <laughs> the dry junkie. There's a term you don't hear very, very often, but yeah, but that. Where you've got to fill the void with something else. And it doesn't have to be like magic. It doesn't have to be something that's, that's uh, you know, you know, I'm going to better mankind. I'm going to better myself. I'm going to become fit and do, uh, you know, exercise. And I'm going to run marathons. You don't have to fucking run a marathon. You just don't have to destroy yourself. <laughs> Totally good. You know what? That's going to be the name of the... That's the name of this episode. You don't have to run a marathon. Because that's really what it all comes down to. Is... Because... All we had... You know, that... The, all you hear about for sobriety and for recovery was 12 steps. So everybody... You get this certain image. That the only... That your only choices are either self-destruction... Or you become that annoying asshole who runs everywhere and looks down on everybody else and is boring. And the thing is, is that you don't have, that's, that's not, it's not one or the other. Because if it was, the, you know, that's, how do you not go, well, I'd rather self-destruct and enjoy myself and deal with the consequences. I don't want to be that boring asshole. And, uh, and man, that's, that's why I'm going to keep doing this. It's just because I want people to realize that there's options. It's, everything's not black and white. It's not one or the other. There's a whole lot of gray. There's a whole lot of options. You can be interesting. You can be, you know, happy-ish. Just like everybody else. I see people who are drunk. They're not... They're not completely happy <laughs> the whole time. Nobody's completely happy the whole time. You have rich people killing themselves. Money didn't make them happy. You know, it's there's options. You got options. You get to do other things. You can get to obsess about other things. By the way, if you want to run a marathon, fucking run a marathon. But uh, but you don't imagine imagine somebody trying to run miles who hates running. Why would you do that to yourself? Man. I work out 15 minutes, you know, five five times a week. And it's not a strenuous workout. 
Of course, I've been blessed with the uh, you know, metabolism of a teenager. Like, still. It's not fair. I know. I know, you guys. It's not fair. But, uh, you know, I do whatever. I'm trying to uh, cut out red meat. Not all of it. Just some of it. Most of it. Like, I'm not going to give up tacos. Can't do it. Picadillo, bitch. I can't can't give it up. But uh, anyway, just, yeah, that's 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 why I, I, I like to, you know, that's why I like to hear from you guys. I like to hear that uh, there are others out there because it's encouraging to me as well as I'm somewhat encouraging to you that uh, you're not alone, that there's, uh, you know, I know that there, there's lots of people who have quit and moved on with their lives and they're just not vocal about it because it's like, you know what, this is my new chapter. I don't want to think about it and I'm not, uh, you know. So there's a lot of us. There's more than you think. So keep moving forward. You know, keep, keep working on yourself and not in a moral way. You know your morals. Just, you know, just do, you know, be, be, Try not to be an asshole How about that. Try not to be some, you know, keep to your word, stay in your lane, all that shit. That's, uh, that's about it. But yeah, I'm 46, everybody. And it's really encouraging. I think the most encouraging thing to me is when I see comedians that I like, like Bill Burr and, and Mark Marin and different people who are, you know, who broke 50 and they're still going. So it's like, all right, it's okay. I know I'm getting older, but they're older than me and they seem to be doing fine. So I'm going to keep going. It's a state of mind until the body breaks down. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, but so far I'm doing all right. Uh, all right, you guys, thanks for joining me. Maybe we'll talk about death next week. Mm, ooh. Um, this is a yes. I'm, this has been yes. I'm still sober. I'm John Rabin. Later. <laughs>